Good morning. Today is Sunday, May 28, 2017. The time is 9 a.m. in the Eastern Standard Time Zone, and we're broadcasting to you live from the Greater Toronto Area of Ontario, Canada. And today's menu, by viewer's request, is a Dutch Dutch pastry dish called broider. It uh, is a national dish that is often eaten at festivals in a uh, in a district of Horns and also in Brabant. And if I need any correction to that, please let me know. And this is a bread cake that has in it uh, apricots and uh, raisins mixed into it followed by a brown sugar filling with almonds and lemon zest sandwiched in between. So let's get started. We had some bread dough rising before this show and that's in the oven warmer. So let's take that out. approximately three cups of dough that is uh, slightly frozen, and in it we have milk, yeast, flour, and egg. We have approximately two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, almost one teaspoon of yeast, one and a half tablespoons of sugar, the recipe didn't uh, call for sugar, but I think it helps with the rising and the yeast and a pinch of salt. So in it, we are going to add some raisins and apricots to it. Firstly, for the raisins and apricots, I had them, they're in dry format, and I had them drying in, or sorry, uh, hydrating in water. So we're going to put these in a pan to, in a pot to boil so that they can just further well up and expand and be juicier. Okay, so let's do that. a bit of water and we'll only have this simmering for approximately 15 minutes and then we will put it into the dough. I'm actually going to put this back in the warmer while it's boiling just to or put it right beside the the raisins apricots so that the, some of the warmth can help it with the rising. We're also going to uh, work on the filling now. So in this uh, bread cake filling, we have almonds, lemon zest, And there is a special spice mix, which is uh, unique or special to the Dutch culture. It's spelled S-P-E-C-U-L-A-A S-K-R-U-I-N. And I have this listed in my uh, recipes. If you hit exclamation mark recipe, you'll have the recipe for the spice mix. So this spice mix is very, very fragrant. And often people make a larger quantity to store later. We're going to work with a smaller quantity for this recipe. The recipe would call for one to two teaspoons of the spice mix. So we're just going to put together some for this show. Okay, but if you want to make more for later, that is fine. And as you can see, I'm taking out quite a lot of spices and I will name these spices for you. Okay. 
We have cinnamon, nutmeg, cardamom, star anise or anise powder, coriander, clove, yeah, you can see that, okay, white pepper, and mace. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight ingredients, and uh, as you can tell, it's going to be quite fragrant. So, because we're only doing one to two teaspoons for this recipe, we're just going to eye it and mix a combination of these. Yeah. There are certain spices that will um, come out more prominently, such as cinnamon, and we can do a little bit more of the cinnamon. Oh, and I'm also missing ginger. Okay, so let's count that again. It's quite a lot of spices. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine spices. Okay, so I'm going to check on our apricots and raisins. So nothing interesting, so I don't have a camera showing that. We were just boiling dried raisins and dried apricots. I didn't measure any specific amount, just a approximately one quarter to, or half a cup to three quarters cup that we want to mix into our uh, bread mix. Okay, so let's put together our spices. So we have nine spices here. I was going to use my fingers, but I'm going to, I think they'll get quite sticky from pinching those nine spices. So I'm just gonna grab our teaspoon measure. So nine spices, this is a quarter teaspoon measure times um, nine. That's approximately over two teaspoons. 0.25 times 9 is 2.25 uh, teaspoons, so that's okay. It'll be very flavorful. Good morning, Gunsmith. How are you today? Early morning to you, and uh, hope you're having a great uh, weekend so far. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just going to go ahead and put approximately... Um, one eighth or one quarter teaspoon of each of these spices into the bowl. I'm going to place greater emphasis on the cinnamon. Okay. Okay, so ginger. You've been gaming all night. You have not slept yet. Okay. <laughs> well, I uh, won't, won't blame you. <laughs> If you fall asleep any moment, uh, you deserve rest. It's one of <laughs> it's one of the things that I can't miss. <laughs> yeah, rest is when you heal, rejuvenate. <laughs> Gaming and what game did you play? <laughs> and good morning to you, Death Theater. How are you? And I love the accent over the U. I don't know what that accent is called the uh, double dots on the top. Um, it sort of themes, it sort of looks to be in theme with our sh stream today. We are making Dutch Broider, which is a uh, national uh, baked bread cake dish in, uh, from, um, I guess, Dutch speaking countries. I'm gonna say Netherlands because uh, Netherlands used to be called Holland and they speak Dutch, but I think they speak Dutch in Belgium. And our viewer who requested this is from Belgium. So it's a popular Dutch recipe. Okay. And I'm just putting a quarter teaspoon or one eighth to one quarter teaspoon roughly of each of these nine spices, nine spices. Players unknown battlegrounds, okay. I will ask Mr. Cook for fun if he's uh, it's not something he's played before. He is watching a race right now. I think it's, I don't know if it's formula something. 
<laughs> Formula One. I don't know if it's that if it's that one, but he made sure to get up for that and uh, help do some setup here before the show. Okay. Double dot is a diacritic symbol. Diacritic. A diacritic. Diacritic. That's a fancy word. <laughs> a little bit more. Uh, is this cinnamon? Yes, a little bit more cinnamon here. Okay. So here's our spice mix. Yeah, nine different spices. Yeah, I had a clear bowl just so that you can see this time. So it's quite interesting. It's for our last show when we made the jambalaya rice. There was a Cajun seasoning mix. I didn't have that, so I um, put it together on the show. It's made of um, basic spices that we already had in the cupboard. Um, and a lot of these seasonings, you can make them on your own by just following a seasoning mix recipe. But here, uh, we... Here again, we are also putting together the um, spice mix. Good morning, Almaria. <laughs> and we're dedicating the stream to you. Your request for a Dutch broider or Dutch brother, which was a while ago. And I apologize for not getting to it sooner, but uh, there's no better time like the present. And I was just talking about how it's very interesting um, to put together this seasoning mix. And thank you so much for sending me in a whisper the recipe for the seasoning mix. So we have nine different ingredients in here. So I guess the close up. And I am going to give it a nice um, grinding in the processor as some of like the clove, um, some of the anise seeds are still whole. They are not finely ground. And when you grind it, the fragrant gets released um, because when you increase the surface area, uh, you get more flavors coming out. And I love doing this. This is my little science demonstration. So let's just say you had, so this is, pretend this is like a, a square. Let's say you had uh, your, hold on, <laughs> your six sides of this cube. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now you cut it. You have just opened up two X, no, you've opened up more sides. And now you have the six sides here and the six sides here. So you've doubled the surface area from six to 12. And therefore, there are more um, surfaces to uh, release the fragrance. So by grounding it up, we open up the surfaces of uh, spices. So nine ingredients, ginger, white powder, cinnamon, nutmeg, mace, cardamom, anise heath, coriander seed, and clove. I kind of feel like I should have a close up of what the original spice looks like because this doesn't mean anything to you. <laughs> This is ginger powder. I should show you ginger, but um, <laughs> we're not that. <laughs> we're not grounding it from 100% scratch for all ingredients. So, Manual grinders. I have a mortar and pestle. I could use that. Okay. <laughs> I do have a mortar and pestle. Is it right here? <laughs> um, okay, let's use it because the great thing about mortar and pestle is that a lot of people don't like, like to purposely not wash these so that when you're um, grinding other foods in the future, all the flavors blend. Like they like, they like to just keep the flavors in, um, in the in the mortar, it's, I think this is a pestle and this is the mortar, or it could be, could be reversed, but they like to keep it in the, I guess the holder, and so that in the future, all your, the flavors come out of everything that you're cooking, and that's the same with cast iron pans. A lot of people who use them, they don't wash them with 
soap and water. I think they just wipe it down and the flavors come out in your other foods. Okay, I'm just going to put these aside so we have a clean surface. for that idea about using grinder. I can just, I can f read the chat while I'm doing this. So, can you see? Oh, it's not showing. Well, okay. <laughs> Milling or grinding? <laughs> Milling or grinding? I don't know the difference. Cardamom. Cardamom is very, very nice. Very sweet, floral-y, fragrant tea. I like the smell of uh, cardamom. If I wanted to be fancy, I could put masala spice. When I was visiting Nepal, the teas are fragranted. It's pretty much similar to Indian tea. Uh, the Indian tea, or also known as chai, has spices in it. And I bought that spice mix. <laughs> This is reminding me of it because cinnamon is such a uh, prominent flavor in masala. So as I grind this, a lot of flavors are, op are being released. The surface areas of the clove, the anise seeds are just opening up and I can definitely smell it. And I, you know, thanks for telling me to, uh, or at least reminding me of the grinder because in another stream, somebody mentioned it as well um, to use a, a, a to, my, uh, to grind manually. And that was another observation that I made that when you're doing it by hand, the flavor comes out and it just sort of adds to the cooking experiment, the uh, cooking experience and it's part of cooking therapy when the aromas come out or aromatherapy as they call it. So I'm actually, I kind of feel like I'm eating right now. Like I feel like I'm eating candy as I do this because in a way it smells a lot like candy with the cinnamon flavors coming out. And I wish that it could, it could flow to you. <laughs> so passing you some fragrance. Yes. Of the uh, specula. Um, Speculas Grun Spice. That's right. Ginger in the movie Star Gilligan's Island. <laughs> the redhead. <laughs> I so for some of you who are newly tuned in or not familiar, Gilligan's Island is a very very old uh, show. I did watch it during my lunches when I came home from school for lunch. It was, I think the episodes were in black and white or just not colored the way we have color TV. Now you can definitely tell if you were to watch an episode today that it's an older show just from the quality of the picture on screen. And it's about, it's about a group of friends, Gilligan being the star of the show, who are stranded on an island and every episode they find a way to get off, but they can never get off. But it's, uh, this, it's, there's a lot of comedy in the show. There's a lot of, or at least comic, uh, comic relief scenes in it. So it is, it, it doesn't come across as a, a sad or very uh, dramatic movie. It's, just your your half an hour episode and it's light to watch and I think in the actual movie there's a Gilligan's Island movie where uh, there's good news <laughs> there's a conclusion to their long stay on the island wow I'm actually thinking I should watch that I don't think I've seen the movie <laughs> okay Elmire well if the percentage are the same I don't think I don't it um mine with fresher grounded spices ah okay <laughs> Yes, I'll smell the fragrance. Can you move the pestle to the to be seen in the other uh, cam view? 
Oh, maybe I have already. Yeah, it's not. Um, it's. It's. I can't get this. So the camera height is up here because of this stand. I I can't make these legs even shorter. But let me give you the close up. So it looks looks good. It's pretty consistent, homogeneous, and it's looking like a nice uh, brown color. It almost looks like cinnamon, even though there's a mixture of nine different ingredients. Hmm. Just taste only a pinch. I wonder, Almira, if I put all of this in the filling, will it be too strong? I I always thought it's safer to make more than less and I do like spices. I, I'm not afraid of putting it all. It's not uh, anything I can't handle. You know what? I'm going to give it a little taste. Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> mm. I don't mind. It's not strong at all. I don't mind using it all. It's very nice. Hmm, it would be good. It does remind me of masala tea. Hmm, this cardamom is good for Bloody Mary drink. Interesting. Cardamom. I, I've never heard of that. So, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but in Canada, there is this drink that is similar to Bloody Mary called the Caesar. And it is a Canadian drink. It is made with, oh, I don't have any bartending skills. I think it's vodka and there's this tomato juice in Canada called clamato. It's actually a tomato clam juice. So it has some clam broth mixed with the tomato juice and then the vodka. And usually it's served with a celery stock, sometimes a lime wedge. Um, and then the rim would have, have uh, salt and Oh, and, and, and maybe some chili powder, but sometimes um, the Clamato juice is spicy. You can buy spicy or you can put some hot sauce right in the drink, Tabasco hot sauce or another hot sauce. And it's a Canadian drink. And when I go to the U.S., I, I might order a spicy Bloody Mary in case the bartender doesn't know what a Caesar is. And so that's interesting. I've never heard of, of cardamom in it, but cardamom is so fragrant and aromatic that I'm interested to try that. Okay, so grinding versus milling. Grinding breaks solid materials into smaller pieces than milling. Ah, okay. <laughs> yes, Almara is familiar with this. Is this a... Is this a bread cake that you make often, Almira, or is this something that you eat regularly in your family? <laughs> Gilligan's Island is very, very old. <laughs> I can't really hide that fact, though, due to the picture. <laughs> but I, I grew up watching it, too. So... <laughs> I'm in that same uh, boat as Gilligan, Gilligan Island, or I'm on the same island as uh, Gilligan Island. <laughs> what does that say on your shirt? Oh, I don't know if I could show you because, no, I could, it's fine. It says replay, it's a brand. I don't even think it's popular anymore, but back in the day, it was one of those brands that, those uh, denim brands that were, were popular to wear back in high school. <laughs> and I, I don't think, yeah, I don't think it's popular anymore. So there you go. I watch Gilligan Island. I wear stuff from high school. <laughs> Brands that don't exist anymore. Maybe it does, but it's been dated. Like, like I am. I still have to add nuts, sugar, and almonds. Yes. Hello, cool man. How are you? Did you miss? You missed a lot. You missed us grinding this spice together that contains nine ingredients. So quiz, can you list these nine ingredients from memory? <laughs> I'll give you some time then I'll get back to that. But if you, um, if you hit exclamation mark recipe, you will get the recipe. Yeah. 
Uh, it's not a common mix since some beside the brothers also use in cookies, cakes, and pies. I can see why because it's fragrant, and I'm definitely going to try adding this to to some cookies in the future or cakes because it's so so fragranty. <laughs> so the funny thing is. I think you can see the recipe, but in my stream lab, um, so I'm not looking at Twitch right now. I'm looking at a chatbot widget, a chatbot widget by streamlabs.com. And so I can't see, and I don't have a song list. Oh no. I know that that's come up probably way back in December, and January. And I, I wanted to play some, um, some classic songs and I, I, I don't want them to be cut out when I try to when I try to watch the replay or if other people try to watch the replay because if it's not if it's if it's not licensed then or I don't know yeah or not permitted the the song will get cut out and then so does all the audio so you can't hear anything okay Okay, so now that I've done this spice mix, I'm going to I'm going to check on the raisins and apricots, and we're going to cut them up. They're actually they've actually been simmering for a good 15 minutes. So I'll turn it off. So I boiled our raisins and apricots. Yeah, nothing special. I actually think they can go straight in, but the recipe says to boil them and that will plump them up and give them um, added juiciness. So I am going to take my, my strainer is occupied with a cilantro for our pico de gallo. I'm going to take out our spider. This is called a spider. I didn't know that, but I learned this is called a spider and just take out the apricot and the um, raisins. Okay, I should be using, I'll use this spice one. Okay. Cleaver. I was thinking these are really small and it might um, freak you out if you're not used to seeing the cleaver, but it's really my signature, so I won't change that. I'll keep using my cleaver. Song request. Yes, that is a spice. Speculas cruden. Yeah. I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, um, as it's, um, I'm, I'm reading an English version of the name of that spice, or at least the Latinized version. Although I think I think the Dutch language um, uses Latin characters. Okay, so just so I'm just going to chop up these uh, raisins and apricot. I didn't. Add too many apricots. So I actually have two recipes listed and I'm using a combination of each. The recipe that is in English from the website Dutch Table, they call this Horns um, Dutch Brother or Dutch Broider, Horns, um, hailing from the town of Horns, I think in the south. And the other recipe that's in the Dutch language, which you have to use Google Translate to read if you want to, to read it in English, is from is uh, the Brabants 
uh, version, which I believe is another region of uh, the Netherlands. So I'm using a combination. The what the the recipe in English from Dutch Table doesn't call for the uh, uh, speck culas gruden spice. The Dutch version does, and the English one also doesn't call for apricots. The Dutch version does. So I thought, let's do the one that's uh, let's sort of combine them so that we get more flavors in our recipe. Oh, and the English one didn't call for almonds, so. I thought it's interesting to put more in your recipe. Hmm, okay. Oh, the raisins are already on the right side. So I'll just cut up the, the apricots then. Okay, great. Thanks for the tip, Almaria. I'm a little nervous because I, I don't know if the bread um, will rise. <laughs> I'm not very good at getting bread to rise. It's quite cold in Canada, or at least in my home right now. And I did put my dough uh, mix in the, or bread mix in the oven warmer this morning at 7.30, which is uh, two hours ago. Right now it's sitting beside the, the dough is sitting beside where the apricots and raisins were boiling to sort of get some of that heat. So, hmm. so I'm just dicing them up. I'm a little worried about the bread not rising. Yeah, so <laughs> we'll see how we do. I do love the color though of the apricot. And some recipes will call for white raisins. I only had the dark ones um, and white raisins. I could find them, but they're not as commonly accessible as the darker raisins in Canada or Toronto. But I really love the color of the apricot. As you can see in the screen, it's got a nice, orange hue. The inside is a brighter orange than the outer layer. Yeah. Okay, so I'll put these aside. I'm actually going to put this in my mixing bowl. Okay. Because it's going to get mixed with the dough. Okay, nervous. I hope <laughs> I hope the bread will rise. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's check on our dough. If I fall, oh, okay, it did rise. <laughs> yeah, it did rise. It didn't double in size, but it will collapse again after we mix the raisins and apricots in. The reason I, I am, I, I didn't uh, add the, the fruits in yesterday with the mix is that, is that, Actually, I don't have a good reason, but what I actually did was do a overnight overnight rise with with kefir, which is fermented milk. And this morning I mixed in the egg. I didn't want the egg um, of the raw egg sitting in the batter in room temperature overnight. So I mixed in the egg this morning. I also added a bit of yeast too to help it. So. <laughs> I have a couple of rising agents going on here and I wanted to boil the, I wanted the fruits to be fresher. So <laughs> I didn't follow the video exactly, <laughs> Almaria. Um, so let's hope it works out. Okay, give my hands a wash and then I will actually, I'll just get us, I'll just, 
put this in since I'm using the since I'm using the mixer. Okay. And I'm not I'm right handed so my the back of the bowl is facing you rather than like that way. <laughs> I can't do the other way. I even saw on YouTube that there is a Sri Lankan version of the Dutch brother and they, they don't add a filling to it. They put it in a bunt pan. So I think that's interesting. There might have been some Dutch influence in um, Sri Lanka. And so that recipe carried, made its way over to there. Yeah. And I find that in Indonesia, there's a lot of, there's also some Indonesian influence in the Netherlands because the Dutch occupied the uh, in, um, Indonesia for some time. Oh, they need my kneader, the kneading hook. The great thing about these streams is that I'm exploring and I'm learning more techniques. I wasn't too much of a baker before I started streaming and I've gotten inspiration from viewers and learned more uh, cooking techniques. So I've been able to learn together with you. <laughs> and I always tell people, I remind people that I'm a home chef. I'm not professional so I'm just like I'm just like you so just like or you might be professional I'm just like the average person there okay all right okay I'm gonna turn I don't know I don't want this to be really loud I don't think it'll be too loud because this is not as loud as the other processor okay so I have that on low it's just that's mixing on its own while that is mixing let's get ready some filling mix take approximately just under a cup of almonds. The recipe normally calls for white almonds. These almonds have skins on them. And I'm just going to go ahead and use them. Um, they don't taste too different from white almonds. We eat brown almonds whole, the same as we can with the white almonds. The difference is that the white almonds have been skinned, but the skins are perfectly fine. It's probably a more, it looks nicer <laughs> to have the almonds be pure white, but it's also going to blend with the brown sugar filling, so the brown won't uh, detract, won't uh, take away from the appearance. Okay. So, oops. Ah, okay, there's different ingredients depending on the region. Yes, we have to let the dough rest again. So I just wanted to show you that I, the recipe called for three cups of flour. I actually put two and a half because I thought that when I'm working with the dough, I'll end up adding more flour. And I can see that it's looking 
moist because it's looking moist because of the liquid that came out of the raisins and the apricots. It's gotten quite sticky and gooey, right? So I'm going to add a bit of flour, not too much. Okay. So I've got about a quarter cup here. I'll just add that in. Okay. Because so I did start off with a little bit less flour, just a little bit less flour. And I'll put that back on. The liquids from the raisins and the apricots sort of affected the dough to consistency. Okay, so back in we go. We are also, and I hope you can hear me because there's this going on <laughs> while I'm talking. I'm also going to grate some lemon zest. This lemon zest is going to go in the sugar, brown sugar filling. And I quite like the flavor of lemon zest. I used it in a Swiss nut tart recipe and a Engadina nuts tart for our 100th follower celebration. And the lemon zest was added right into the pie crust and it was really, really good. Okay. The small side, like here. <laughs> or is this too loud? <laughs> okay. So I have that. That will be quite strong. Yeah. What I'll do is when I'm making the filling, I'll taste it as I go before I add the egg. Then we can have a sense of how uh, much lemon zest we need. tuning in. The last time that was mentioned, it was another fellow um, Irish viewer that was tuning in. So if this is your first time, welcome to Cook for Fun TV. And we did make quite a change to the display. The flag used to be across the top, but because of space uh, rest restrictions, um, we couldn't fit all the flags, so now we have them on the sides. <laughs> so let's try to get flags going around the entire frame, and that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, you changed your name, slimy you. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> but I wasn't sure. No Japanese yet. Mm -hmm. We haven't actually had a Japanese uh, a viewer tune in, so we have to added as we learn about the viewers yeah and we've actually cooked japanese food too on the show so it's looking still a little sticky i'm going to add another another half cup of flour or so and i think that's it i'll work i'll just work with it after that so approximately a quarter cup of flour i'll just put that in okay we'll continue but I do want to let it get start resting. Okay. 
Ah, it's turning more into a doll. Very good. <laughs> really? No Japanese viewer yet? <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you, Jesse. That would be nice if we get some more uh, viewers tuning you in. That's always nice. And to learn about the foods that they cook, I think that outside of Japan, there's a stereotypic notions of what Japanese food is. Jap um, Japan, uh, we always think of sushi or, or ramen or dumplings, but the Japanese culture has tons of different foods. And in fact, when I went to Japan a couple of years ago, sushi isn't something they eat all the time. It's, it's, a, it's eaten as a snack or just sometimes. Ramen's eaten often though, and there's all kinds of um, dishes out there. <laughs> okay, that's looking better. Okay. <laughs> yes, it's more like a bread now. Finally, we have more of a dough consistency. Okay. easier to show you this way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I use my hands to work it. Oh, I think I might need more flour. No, it's actually okay. It's actually okay. It's not, it gets, it's pulling away from my hands, but it's not sticking to it. So it's got a decent texture. So we'll work with that. So this is, as Almira mentioned, this is a this is a bread cake. It's not a, a cake cake. <laughs> so the texture is more of a bread. I think we're done with the mixer. So I'll take that off camera. Right. Okay. And I'll wash my hands. I did give this a wipe. So that's okay. I'll and I will form our, our pieces, <laughs> our sandwich pieces for the bread and let it rest. Okay, great. So I'll wash my hands. Ah, cool man likes the ramen and dumplings and the chicken. So if I ever go, that is what I would need, would look for. Ah, I had, I went to a Japanese restaurant last week and I had katsudon, which is a rice with a pork cutlet. It's pretty much like a schnitzel. It was pretty much a, a Japanese a schnitzel on top with some steamed egg and onion. So I think what they did was had the cooked rice in the bowl, had the schnitzel on top. It was cut up into strips and they poured a beet, a beaten egg with onions in it um, over the rice and they steamed it. And that was really, really nice. <laughs> Yes, I had a cat. I had Don Katsu. <laughs> okay. And I did wipe this down earlier today, but there. For good measure, another wiping. And get a little bit of flour for our surface. Okay. Here goes nothing because I'm not the I'm not the pastry expert. I'm no expert. <laughs> and then we'll just put the... And I'm gonna show you the dough once I get it out. It's quite nice with all the raisins and apricots blended in. Okay. 
Like it's it's like a it's like a speckled dough. It's quite nice. I'm actually tempted to mix the lemon zest in there too because I did it before when I made the Swiss nut tart and just having the the lemon zest gave it a nice kick. Yeah, we probably I probably could put some in because I did I did uh, great quite a bit of it. I need this to keep my hands. You can't see. Sorry. I wish the camera could sort of pan around and show all angles. I'm not left-handed. <laughs> ah, directly on the baking sheet. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> And I just saw your message, I didn't, your comment. That's a good idea. <laughs> and I got that tip too a couple streams ago from one of our viewers who is a pastry chef when we made our Finnish rice pudding pies just to do it directly on the um, baking sheet. Yeah. I'm so used to kneading on the countertop directly but I, I, I am gonna take I am going to take it out take out our baking sheet and yeah but I'll just since I have it here <laughs> it's actually not bad it did rise so it's it's quite uh, springy so it's not bad I'm going to take out our baking sheet now. Thanks, cool man. Oh, thanks, Almaria. <laughs> and our bench scraper, so I get to all the pieces. That's a good idea. My hands are gonna be, I'm gonna wash them again, but good idea. Should have thought of that. A silicone baking sheet that goes right on the baking pan. Yeah. I'm actually gonna wipe it. Wipe it. I did wash it, but it's been in the cupboard. Okay. I should have done that. Put it done it right on here. Okay. you this though I wanted to show you um, close up of the dough okay you can see the the raisins the sp and the color in it it's quite nice the speckles quite nice <laughs> hi Shire Tone Shire Tone is from the Netherlands so it's possible that Shire Tone has uh, 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 seen this this dish I always hesitate when I call a bakery item a dish because I think of dishes as being savory so I don't know what you would I guess bread cake there I'll just be very specific Charito might be familiar familiar with this bread cake so I'm gonna cut that in half we're gonna make a bottom and a top for this bread cake and we're going to fill the fill in the middle with a brown sugar almond lemon zest filling but you know what i wanted we have so much lemon zest i wanted to sneak oh i'll garnish the top with a bit of this lemon zest i grated so much of it that i don't think i need to use it all for the filling but um okay so and i'm going to get a parchment paper So, okay, 
themed. So I'm going to make these circles. I actually don't know how big to make them. <laughs> I'll just fill the... <laughs> I will just... And I'm not rolling it out. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> okay. Hang on. <laughs> this is getting a little ad hoc. <laughs> but it's a good experience. It's good to get me baking because it's not something I do a lot and it's definitely a skill I need to learn. Um, I don't, yeah. I've made pies, okay, on the show. Okay. Oh, oh, do I put the spices in the dough? I thought the spices go in the filling. <laughs> Uh-oh, okay. Because I read the Dutch version of the recipe translated in English, so should I, should I? Spices in the filling, okay. Oh, sorry, okay, I, I'm okay, I'm on track. Okay, so that's okay. Almira was just giving Shiretone a recap of what Shiretone missed which was this um, um, Spekalask Gruden spice mix. It's got nine spices in it. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if I can remember it by heart. Um, cinnamon, cardamom, white pepper, ginger, mace, clove, anise, hmm. coriander, one more <laughs> nutmeg there you go <laughs> okay oh thank you death theater i'm i don't i'm i'm thinking i keep flicking my hair because it's going in my eye so i'm thinking <laughs> it's not a good stream because i keep <laughs> getting distracted and it might affect my my focus so <laughs> This isn't the good way, like, uh, you can tell my um, gestures are not very professional from the way I'm lifting up the, okay, so, okay, oh, it's, it's not a circle shape, it's, okay, I'll try to turn it into an oblong circle, like a long circle, but here you go, that's, is this huge? This is the bottom piece for the, um, for the bread cake okay and you know what i was going to use parchment paper yeah i can use parchment paper i have another one of these silicone sheets then i don't have to waste paper okay i have another one of these Oh, in the bottom, because I'm going to, <laughs> because I'm going to put it right on top. Oh, I don't have to use a second silicone sheet. I just thought, um, I need to, oh, I can put the filling right on, okay. Okay, I'll listen to Almira, because Almira has done this before. <laughs> This is my first time ever, but so far. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, so. Okay, I'll just. Okay, okay. So let's put this aside. Okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> now we're going to do the filling. For the filling, we're going to. <coughs> Mix lemon zest, ground almond, and our speculas gruden spice and one egg. I'm going to the non I'm going to do the non-egg ingredients first 
and then taste it manually and then add the egg. So let's grind this up. Almonds are very hard. So if you're using a regular processor like what I'm using, you should pulse it so that you can prevent the blade from getting damaged. Okay. And I'm going to turn off the mic when I grind the almonds um, because it'll be loud. <laughs> as some of you experienced before. <laughs> it got really, really loud. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to mute the mic. It'll be really loud. Okay. So the almonds are grounded into a powder. I also had some that I made a while back to add to curry <laughs> before and I didn't finish it. So we get extra almond. I'm excited because I was worried about how the dough would turn out, but it's looking pretty good, so I'm really excited. A few streams ago when I made um, the Finnish rice pudding pies, I was also so nervous too because I've never eaten it before, so I can't think, I can't imagine how it's going to turn out like in the end. I have no frame of reference, I'm just... Um, trying it out. <laughs> I don't know what it's supposed to feel like or smell like. <laughs> yeah, but I'm fortunate to be guided by a couple of viewers <laughs> who have experienced this before. Th before. Yeah, Brabant Broder. Yes, so um, under exclamation mark recipe command, I posted a recipe for the Brabant Broder and also the horns Broder, yeah, because when I searched for this recipe, they both came up and I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure, yeah, <laughs> um, which, like what the authentic recipe was supposed to look like, but it turns out that it, uh, Burbants and Horns are different regions, so they, each region has their own version. Okay, and I have to add the sugar. Yes, about a cup of sugar. Okay, that's that's quite a bit of, it's gonna be quite nice. I'm looking forward to this. Okay, so uh, I'll add this right here. <laughs> you can tell from my gestures and my hesitation that <laughs> it's definitely my first time. But I'm comforted that you're watching and I'm getting guidance through this. So I'm gonna just put away some items because it's getting quite cluttery here. Okay. I will use this later though for our salsa. This is pretty heavy, this kitchen aid. Uh-oh, uh-oh, that's not good. Uh-oh. Okay, that was my water that spilled, but good thing we have tile here and it's just plain water, nothing else. 
so we'll be good. And I just have a towel on the floor, and we're good. Okay. Okay, so... I wonder if I should grind the a lemon even further. What I could do is I'll just hand chop it. So that... And I'm going to use the whole thing. Yeah, it should be okay. Because there's a lot of filling that's going in. It's quite a lot of filling. Plus about a cup of brown sugar. Not just... But that is a lot of lemon. <laughs> Broder has a lot of different variations across different regions. Okay. A lot of different... A lot of... Wow, okay. What are some common um, variations that you like, Shire Town? So this is approximately two teaspoons of lemon zest. I have some extra here, but I'm going to just taste it before I add more. I mean, I think I can go ahead and add the rest. Lemon zest. Mm, I do like it though. <laughs> I do like the lemon zest, but usually you don't need a lot. Okay, and sugar time. So, a cup of brown sugar. I actually like to reduce by 25% when I work with sugar. So here is one cup. I'm not going to fill it 100%. I'm just, I'm going, but I'm going to fill it. I'm just going to be shy of one cup. I really like the color of the, the bread dough. I just love the speckled raisins and apricots. Yeah. I like bread that has ingredients in it. Like... I like olive bread, bread with sun-dried tomato. And a German viewer last week mentioned about zucchini bread too. Yeah. I find that interesting. A lot of, a lot of things you can do with foods. And I like the lemon zest idea too. I saw that I mentioned in the the Swiss uh, nut tart recipe I made. Uh, I haven't seen that in a lot of recipes in North America. Yeah. Frygian and Gelderland. Ah, oh, it's all right, Charto. <laughs> all horns is a part is in gel a gel a gelderland okay so from what i read horns is the southern part of the netherlands which uh, part of netherlands is brabant yeah and almira is actually tuning in from belgium but is familiar with the Dutch um, broider recipe. Hmm. I have a small opening in this sugar bag because I don't uh, want it to spill so easily after. I have like double bag. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, okay. So here's the cup. It's not completely filled. I just like to um, use a bit less than one cup because I find it kind of, I find a lot of uh, <laughs> recipes, I find one cup to be a lot of sugar. Okay. And I'll, guess, I'll just use a fork. Okay. Oh, and I'll add the um, 
Speculas Gruden Spice. Yeah. Okay. It's very nice. I'm excited to try this spice mix for cookies and other cakes that I make. It's so fragrant with the cinnamon and the anise powder and the clove. It's got nine ingredients, so it's so fragrant and they're aromatic. Yeah. Okay, so Horn is in the northwest. I'm just trying to fall. I'm confused. So. Horns is north. Oh, I thought Horns was south. Okay, I misread because in the Dutch table recipe, it talked about how it's carnivals. Uh, it, it talks a lot about how people in the south make this mix the make the horns recipe um and they talk about how in the north they make their own version so i kept thinking that horns is in the south if they're talking about the north <laughs> okay there are five places called horn <laughs> so it's just called the dutch brother without specifying the location that's good. <laughs> but uh, when I search for this recipe, wow, this is quite a lot of filling. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I'm just going to give it a little taste to see if I need, oh, actually I should add some lemon rind to that. Uh, actually the lemon rind is buried now. So I'll just throw in the rest of the lemon rind that I grated. Mmm, 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 yummy, yummy, yummy. It's very good. Mmm. So I'm just gonna add the rest of the lemon rind in there. Mmm. Brown sugar is so good. And the speculas, uh, speculas gruden. I have to practice saying that. It's such a nice spice mix. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Mmm. Okay. And then we'll crack our egg and that egg will bind it together, keep everything together. So, and I don't throw these out. I will um, wash them, grind them and put them in our garden. Mm -hmm. And if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see that we have a German garden bed in our backyard. It, our garden bed is modeled after a German gardening technique called Kugelkultur, which is kind of like a coffin bed that's overground. So that sounds a bit morbid, but you've got your four sides and then it's, uh, it's filled with soil. It's approximately three and a half feet high. It's filled with soil. It's filled with um, actually a bunch of things, soil, compost, and tree branches. And the tree branches help to retain moisture. So we put our, we put our eggshells in that. And eggshells are a very good natural fertilizer. Okay, take a look at that. So it's binding together well. Egg is a very good binding agent. We use egg to bind meatballs. We use egg in our hamburger patties. In our falafels that we made last week, we used egg. So the egg helps keep it together. And egg is tasty. It's probably one of my favorite easy um, um, ingredients to, or food items to eat. Like my husband and I, we love eggs. Yeah, we often have eggs for breakfast. There is a popular Chinese egg dish that we cook. It's a tomato 
It's a scrambled egg di dish with um, with sauteed tomato with ketchup and some sugar. Yeah, very easy and tasty. Okay, so here's our here's our mix: almonds, egg, speculas gruden, and brown sugar and lemon zest. So I think we're good. Great. Ah, okay. Great. So we're gonna spread it. Okay. Oh, and I'm also gonna add some butter as well. Um, I'm gonna just um, add a couple spoons of butter after I've put it on. <laughs> this doesn't look very professional, what I'm doing. I'm just dangling this, the filling on. Five centimeters from the edge, okay five centimeters so two inches okay so i'll i'll make sure to do that um i'm gonna get our spatula mm -mm. i have another spatula that disappeared on me okay let's five centimeters from the edge yeah the sugar will melt and spill In Shire Tone, we have our pineapple. Uh, we have a whole pineapple for the show <laughs> today where we will make incisions out of. <laughs> We're adding pineapple to our salsa coming up. Yeah, right there. <laughs> This is exciting. Okay. Oh, I don't need to scrape it yet. Now I have to spread it out. Five centimeters from the edge. Okay. Five centimeters. I have to make sure it's even. I have some parts that are not so even. I wonder if I, hmm, if it's gonna, it should be okay. I, I was just worried that sometimes when I bake, the bottom is undercooked, but because it's thin, I think we're gonna be okay. When I make pies, Sometimes I find that the bottom doesn't bake as well as the top part. Hmm. Five centimeters. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit close on one edge. Okay. What I'll do is I'll sort of push it. So, so that the majority of it is in the center. And I think it also helps prevent like spillage too. Like the liquid or the liquidy brown sugar, once it melts, is going to start to seep sideways. So if I kind of gather in the middle more, I think um, it will control that. I'm just guessing. I don't know if that's true, but. That makes sense, because I don't think the, yeah. Okay, sugar melts pretty quickly and easily, so, okay. Before we put in the oven, we let it rest again for 15 minutes. Okay, okay. So, we're just going to get this, oh, it looks pretty good. <laughs> I didn't have to work on it much. Okay, I'll try to get it the same size as our other piece. There are so many recipes that we 
simply don't learn about in North America. And so I think it's fun to just get new ideas on this stream and learn and share. Yeah. Ah, so it's for birthdays or Christmas. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm going to half and I'm gonna go like half. Okay, so we covered it up. <laughs> do I have to do anything to it like, maybe I'll make some design with the edges, I'll just, Twist, it does do a little twist. Just, <laughs> I feel like I need to make some, make some S shapes, make some design. <laughs> oh, okay. So there are a lot of Dutch influences in Belgium because of your proximity to Brabant. Oh, nothing special to the edges, okay. <laughs> I just can't help myself. <laughs> Okay, and when I let it sit, do I have to cover it up? I'm so used to covering up dough that I, yeah. <laughs> okay, don't have to do anything special. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, we were in the same country years ago, okay. That's the case with a lot of regions in um, Europe. Mm hmm okay so I'll let it sit I'm going to add a, a pan over it just to I'm going to add a turkey pan I'm going to add this turkey pan just to cover it I kind of feel like it needs to be covered I'm I'm so used to covering okay let's clean off this counter and we're going to start carving this uh, pineapple <laughs> several hundred years ago. Okay. And I was also mentioning too, before you tuned in Shire Tone, that there are Indonesian influences uh, in Netherlands and vice versa because of um, the Indonesian or the, uh, the Dutch occupation in, in uh, Indonesia. Long time ago. Oops, this fell. Oh, this is coming off. Okay. All right. I will put this aside. Put this aside. Okay. Okay. Swine apple. Swine apple. <laughs> ah, okay. Yes, turn on the oven. I'm going to turn it on to 425. Let's see where it's the. to wash clean this gently okay okay and new towel <laughs> okay ah <laughs> okay so your family has ties to the uh, ties to Indonesia and Netherlands, Charito. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay. So we're making while it's rising. We're going to start cutting some pineapple. We're making a pineapple pico de gallo also known as pineapple salsa. I just like the word P 
Pico de Gallo because it's it's uh, a, it sounds fancy. <laughs> and the basic ingredients for Pico de Gallo um, are not pineapple actually. This is the enhancement. The basic ingredients are cilantro. A pepper so this is jalapeno pepper something spicy or you can omit it if you can't take spicy food tomato and we're working with a partial tomato <laughs> I forgot to get more tomatoes so uh, it won't be as tomatoey um, oil we're using olive oil and chili oil and i'm showing you this olive oil in a sriracha bottle i've shown it before on this show because i don't throw out the sriracha bottle i think they're very very handy to use to store your um, oil i find that with these oil bottles sometimes i get oil streaking down the sides and then when i grab it my hands are all sticky and greasy with the sriracha bottle, um, for some reason, the way the the opening is designed, it it's very clean. You don't get to the oil leaking. So I love using these. I love keeping these bottles. I don't throw them out, and they're good for all kinds of your uh, sauces. Okay, and I had a couple of onions. They should be right here. <laughs> okay, I'll just grab more onions then. Okay, onions and I've got lime, okay. I'll probably just use one lime and two or, th how about two of these onions? Okay. <laughs> oil on your hands, sticky, is that Canadian oil sticky? Ah! No, Canadian oil isn't sticky, but it might get sticky from all the dust and stuff that might, um, <laughs> that the oil might attract <laughs> to it. So it's not sticky, but, <laughs> or I don't know if the oil hardens, it just might kind of feel tackier, <laughs> greasy, <laughs> it has syrup in it. <laughs> okay, so 15 minutes. I think we probably need around 10 more minutes. So I'll just wait till 10.45. Okay. Um, let's do the pineapple once the uh, brother is in the oven. <laughs> And we'll start cutting up the other ingredients. Okay. So 15 minutes. Let's see if I can do this in 15 minutes. Mm, this is a challenge. 15 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes. I have a backup plan. Or not a backup plan. In a, in an extra feature to this show so we're supposed to make just the Dutch brother and Pico de Gallo, but I think that the brother will be baking for 45 minutes and I'll probably have time to do something else. So we're gonna slip in hummus. Hummus is pretty easy to make, so 
I, I was thinking, because every time I bake something for the stream, I have to do something while the the cake is baking, the bread cake is baking, and it has to fit that time slot. What is it, Winston? <laughs> it's Winston is sunbathing. <laughs> yeah. So he heard something and he sort of knocked down some <laughs> something. Like a a vegetable pole, like a garden vegetable pole to help your vegetables climb up. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, he just sort of tapped on it. <laughs> That's right, a backup plan. <laughs> we need those. <laughs> when you're <laughs> cooking something for the first time, like broider, <laughs> At least it is for me. <laughs> Backup plan is important. I was very nervous that my bread dough wouldn't rise, but as I was working with it, it did. It felt fine. It, it didn't feel like a dense dough. It was actually quite, um, um, I don't know, bouncy. It was quite. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. It was a good texture. So, phew. <laughs> Just see how it turns out though. And I'm actually wondering if I should have made two brothers. Because if they're smaller, I could, uh, the baking time might reduce and then I don't have to worry about the consistency in the center if it's not baked in the center completely. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah, <laughs> probably should have done that. <laughs> Hi, Kent0456, how are you? <laughs> Thank you so much for your comment and your constant support. It's been a while since you've been in Singapore. Um, and you've also explored a bit of cooking. You made a banana bread. And anything else you've uh, cooked since moving over? Yeah. And feel free to invite your neighbor over to watch. I know we had your neighbor come on one uh, for one of our streams, so always welcome. And to remind you of home, you. We have our Costa Rican pineapple. So Kent0456 uh, started viewing when he was living in uh, Costa Rica and uh, had a work transfer to Singapore. So moved over. He's in a different time zone. It's I believe 10.30 p.m. Sunday and has continued to watch. So that's very, very nice too. You want to cook your mom's incredibly simple yet delicious pasta tomato sauce. Mmm, you should. Yeah. And learn, and maybe next time you go to see her, you can, if uh, she has her pasta cranker, you might be able to bring it over and make pasta, uh, homemade pasta. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, dice up these onions. Okay. I'm using white or yellow onion. Um, a common onion to use is also red onion. Red onion is not as spicy or not as strong as white onions. So some people like that. If I wanted to make these onions, these white or yellow onions less spicy, I could soak them in water. That takes away some of that um, spiciness. I don't know what you describe that spiciness as, as and it's making me, it's making my eyes water. <laughs> it's making me cry right now, but. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, if I put it in water, that will help. 
<laughs> or I can put a ski mask on right now. <laughs> what are we doing for timed? That's actually a lot of onion. So I might not use it all. But I'll keep, I'll just dice them all and I'll save whatever's left over um, for dinner. We use a lot of onions on this show. We're always cutting onions on this show. These are smaller onions and they're new onions. We just bought them yesterday, a 10 pound sack and they're strong. I think as the onions get older, they're less um, likely to <laughs> cause tears. But what's that word to describe like onions, like that thing that causes uh, tears and I don't know, the spiciness. It's not, the word isn't spicy. It's just, it's just that. Oh. <laughs> I'm crying for Canada and I'm crying for, uh, I'm crying for all of you. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna put half of these. I'll be a trooper. I'll the show must go on. <laughs> okay. Um, put these onions aside, and I'll throw out the peels. I just licked some of my tears. They're sweet. <laughs> I guess they're supposed to be salty. They're kind of saltyish. <laughs> Never cried on the show. Usually the onions don't get to me like that. Okay. And uh, I can't, I can't wipe my eyes. I have to use tissue. Okay. Uh. <laughs> okay. I'll just get a tissue and blot my eyes. <laughs> That's never happened on the show. One second. Okay. Yep. Strong onions. Okay. Still another eight, nine minutes. We can, actually, we can actually get most of this salsa done. There's no race to get it done, but I'm just curious as to how quickly I can do this. Just, just for, just for fun. So we're dicing some tomatoes. So the basic ingredients again, are onions, tomatoes, cilantro, and lime. And the, and the chili is to taste. And so is the salt and pepper. And the olive oil is for texture. Yeah. And we're adding pineapple to brighten up the salsa. Okay, it's already 425 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, but we're just gonna let the brother um, keep rising or resting for another eight minutes or so. I'll actually let it rest longer. I'll just wait till I'm done the salsa. Okay. Yes, 425 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have chopped many onions before. <laughs> Today's emotions welled up high in the stream. Let us never forget. <laughs> you guys make, you guys touch me. <laughs> and it's true, you do. <laughs> Sometimes, especially right after the stream, like my, my, my head is thinking about our conversations. I'm think I'm reflecting. I'm I'm reflecting about some of our conversations, and it's always happy, like nothing bad. Um, 
I'm learning and I'm reflecting and I think about the funny comments <laughs> that were made. Yeah. So, you viewers do touch me <laughs> very much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I talked to my husband too about some of the chats that we have on this stream. Um, he, he often does a lot of home improvements while, or, or chores while I'm streaming. He is, he's building a shed right now. He thought of this idea a couple days ago, started designing and he's building a shed to put some of our shovels, our tools and um, like bags of soil and all sorts of things. Yeah, so, so he's not always watching and often people like refer to Mr. Cook for fun and I always like share with him after the stream like things that people have talked about. Yeah, we have fun. <laughs> we definitely are a community. Everyone that's come in the chat so far today are all viewers that I have. Um, spoken with before and most of you are sort of uh, familiar with each other and so it is very it is very intimate it's, <laughs> which is cool yeah so <laughs> the the point of my spiel is that um, you do touch me. Yeah. I didn't realize before starting uh, my stream, like before, in, like before December, that it would be very two-way. Like I sort of thought um, I, it'd, I'd be this person cooking and showing and I didn't really know what would happen. and. Um, I have mentioned it before too recently on this on the last few streams that it's grown to be a lot more than I expected in a really positive way. Like these uh, viewers requests are a lot of fun just to learn and to share with each other. Um, cooking from other cultures. And I shouldn't say other. When I say that it's just other in terms of what I've experienced, but uh, to the people who make this often, um, it's not other, it's normal. So it's not about normal ab or abnormal, it's just learning something that uh, might be new to this, new to this kitchen. Hmm. Pungent, pungent, is that the word to describe Really, really strong onions. It, yeah, I have to look that up. I mean, with chili, you can easily say spicy, spice level, Scoville level, the spiciness. But with onion and ginger, there's, I don't know the word. So I only cut half the jalapeno just to try it out. Okay, we're almost done. That's how easy it is to make salsa. Then we're going to put our lime in. One trick with lime is to roll it up, get the get the lime vessels broken up inside to release more lime juice. Ah, Almira's gonna let the dogs out shortly. <laughs> okay. Our dog is sleeping. I wonder if you can see him. Hmm. Let me point the camera to him. Can you see him? That's Winston. But I can't zoom. He's lying on the red rug. That's a dog rug. <laughs> He's supposed to wipe his paws on it, but well, he doesn't really do that. <laughs> so that's Winston. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine, Charito imagines there's a, a pile of tools in the garden. 
more in the back in the garage <laughs> there's a pile of everything in the garage and yesterday i noticed that there's a lot of uh empty soil bags and i just reminded that it's garbage collection day on thursday we only have garbage collection every two weeks so we should put those all in the garbage but yeah there's there's a lot of everything <laughs> related to home improvements in the garage we have a two car garage but it's only one car now because <laughs> there's a there's a workbench on one side and there's there's uh, a big sander and there's lots of lumber <laughs> so it's a one car garage now okay he's winston's not doing any interest anything interesting so go back well I don't know if rolling the line is interesting. Pungent. Okay. So I learned a trick. One a viewer gave me a trick and that's to um, cut each end of the line and that will open up the vessels that uh, of the pulp. And I think it's because everything converges to the ends, right? Everything converges, so if you cut that, it all opens up. So. <laughs> I, I'm used to cutting it in half and just squeezing it, but a viewer taught me that trick, and I tried it too on another show. Ah, okay, 10.45. Okay, so we're going to put the brother in soon, but it doesn't hurt to let it rest even longer. Ah, okay, so the tools are in the shed and, sorry, the tools are in the garage and the shed is for the backyard so that he can, he can allocate some of his <laughs> garage <laughs> pilings <laughs> to spread them out into the backyard. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to squeeze. Hmm. Pineapple cake. So we're making pineapple salsa. <laughs> it's misleading. Pineapple salsa. It's not squeezing very well. Huh. Maybe it's just not ripe enough. I'll just cut it in half and then I'll try again. Yeah, it's squeezing better. Lime tricks. <laughs> and I like to squeeze it along the edge of the bowl. I'm not doing anything special. This is just pure preparation. But I encourage you to make your own salsa rather than buying it from the supermarket in a jar. It's it's healthier. The ones that you find in a jar often have preservatives in it, more sodium. It take they tend to taste more ketchupy. Um, when you make it from scratch at home, it tastes a lot better. I'm going to do the other half. Ah, uh, you always buy it. Okay, well, you're learning now how to make the salsa at home. Onion, tomato, cilantro, lime. Pepper to taste, salt to taste, and olive oil for, con for texture. That's it. Remember that. Onion, tomato, cilantro, lime. Onion, tomato, cilantro, lime. Pepper to taste, salt to taste, oil for texture. Onion, tomato, cilantro, and lime. Onion, tomato, cilantro, and lime. Pepper to taste, <laughs> salt to taste, <laughs> and oil for texture. And you can add more of certain ingredients to it. Like if you like more lime, if you like more tomato, more cilantro. I didn't even follow a recipe. I actually 
have a lot of cilantro here, but you can have less or more. Okay. Okay. Uh, give this a stir. I don't use vinegar. Vinegar is pr pretty strong. I use lime. I like lime. You could use some vinegar, but I would test a little bit at a time just so that, uh, just to ensure you like the flavor. And there's all kinds of vinegar. You might want to try with a more mild vinegar. Um, rice vinegar would be interesting because it's on the sweet side, but you might, uh, you, want, you should just uh, test as you go. It could be, it's stronger than lime and uh, you can try balsamic or even red wine, but lime is sort of class, it gets fresh. It's coming straight from the fruit. It's um, quite nice. So I'm just going to taste a bit. I'm going to get a clean spoon. It sort of doesn't matter because I'm eating this at the end, but. Mmm. Huh. Good. Good. Yeah. Okay. So I will add pineapple to it, some olive oil, and some salt to it. But now let's get the brother in the oven. Okay. I'm gonna wash my hands. They're a little bit wet from the wine. Okay. I always like to see what you're seeing. You can see the grater and the lemon in the background. <laughs> okay, so let's check out the brother. It rose for 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Okay. Okay, so. Ta da! I feel like I need a design in the middle. <laughs> I did that for the shepherd's pie. So let's get an apricot. <laughs> this is an important part of the show to add designs to your food. <laughs> okay, I'm going to I'm going to puncture the apricot and stick a raisin in there. <laughs> I'm gonna do an X shape. I don't know if you can see that. You can't, it's off camera. Puncture the apricot with an X shape. Some cranberries would be nice too. Oh, these are really, really dry. All right, I'll just do one. <laughs> oh, but these are really, really dry. They're not soaked. Uh-oh. All right, what can we do with design? I've got coconut shreds too. What do you think? Coconut with broder. Does that work? Hmm. I, oh, I can cut, I can do some. Okay. I'm going to forget the raisins because the raisins, um, like they don't add much nice color to it. They're just really, really dark. I'll add some more lemon zest. We always do this on our show, do some decorating. <laughs> so I'll just add a bit of, uh, grate some lemon. I can even grate some lime. I have another lime I didn't use, so just grate it. So we've got a bit of green going on, but it's not, um, like very green. It's not a very, like some parts of the lime are yellow, so it's just for accent purposes. It won't really do as much. And I think I'll just do like a sunburst because the apricot can represent the middle of the sun. And we'll just sort of, um, yeah. Can you see? Yeah. Sort of do like 
your classic son with the zest acting as like the rays coming out. Though some of these pieces are not, I could do some extra long pieces. Okay, there. So, this is gonna be simple. Yeah. Any ideas? Just give me a shout. <laughs> Yeah, well, we do have raisins in the dough. They were, they're already in there and they have been hydrated. They were boiling in water. These other raisins are just dry. They're just, they're just too dry. So that's okay. I mean, here's our, here's a sun. It's not that special. We've done prettier stuff on the show. Maybe we'll just accent it with some like more I don't know. I don't want to say orbits because it's not a planet, but give it some more. Uh, just, I'm just layering the rays, like rays over rays. Yeah, don't know if that works. Oh, we've got the green ones too. Some green bits. I won't be spending too long doing this because we want to get in the oven. A raise over raise over raise. <laughs> Put a pineapple bubble pen on top. <laughs> we have an apple, we have a pineapple, we have a pet. <laughs> okay, and with the green, ah, I put green around the, um, the rim. I don't have a lot of green, but I, could, I suppose I can grate more. Can you see? Yeah. It's not close up. It's not as interesting as some of my other designs. The shepherd's pie that we did a couple weeks ago, that was, I thought that was nicer. I thought that heart, we made shepherd's pie or cottage pie, which is a casserole dish with a layer of meat, a layer of mashed carrot, a layer of potato, and on top, because the, car the p mashed potato looked kind of plain, we put a, we used a fork and we made a, a nice heart. And we accented the heart with cheddar cheese shreds. And that was quite nice. And some parsley flake. So got some green tucked in the rim. This is gonna bore you because you can't see it, so I, I will pick up the paste. <laughs> so I bet you've never seen a Dutch brother with a sun in the middle like this. <laughs> Only on Cook for Fun TV. some lime rind and some let me show you the close-up now that's right looks aren't everything that's true but I also realized that as a viewer you can't taste it ah okay they're not that decorative okay um, so let's put it in the oven now. All right. You know, I, I hope the bottom though, what I could do is, you know what? I could, I could use the, um, the pizza paddle to put it right on the rack. Cause I'm concerned about the bottom not baking as well. Cause it's not, um, <laughs> Yeah, exposed. Ooh, I can see steam coming out. Okay, here it goes. Ooh. Okay, I'm actually gonna. Ooh, that was a lot of steam coming out. I'm just gonna open this window. Okay, I think that's all right. And I think it bakes for. 30 to 45 minutes. So 
It's 11. Okay, so that's easy to remember. 11 o'clock. Okay, so let's work on the pineapples. And then we will have time to do a hummus. So that's the extra special for this show. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> the smoke alarm did go off, but we're good now. It went off once I opened the oven. We had the oven at 425 for quite a while, but it didn't go off. It's only when I opened the oven that it came off. And now that it's closed and we have um, fanned some of the smoke <laughs> or the heat away, and the windows are open, we're good now. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's add some pineapple to our salsa. The, the way this pineapple is definitely ripe, we got it one and a half weeks ago, and the way to tell if it's ripe is you can pull the leaf out. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna pull the ones that look well, a lot of them look pretty uh, old, <laughs> but I do want to keep some of them on so that we have a nice crown for our presentation. Okay, yeah. okay the rest are intact. To use a smaller knife to work with the inside. <laughs> oh, Texturia, Texturia, hi there. Thank you for your uh, for tuning in. Urchin, should I slow bake or normal bake? I think you should normal bake your cake, but follow your recipe. It really depends on what you are uh, baking. Usually when you bake a cake, the temperature is between 325 and 450. Um, when you slow bake, you usually go low and slow. Slow and slow and high would probably burn your cake, but do follow your recipe. Mm -hmm. Slow and low. I'm not aware of any cake recipes that are low and slow. Mm -hmm. So do check your recipe. Fifty seconds at two fifty. Check if it's two fifty F or two fifty C. Two fifty F for a cake. Fifty seconds. Low on 50, that's a really quick kick. Less than one minute, so it doesn't need to rise. You don't have any egg in it to cook. Well, 50 seconds. At 250, is it a very thin cake? Is it a pan? That 
What's the, what kind of cake is that? Hmm. I think we're okay. <laughs> what kind of cake is that? 50 seconds? Or 50 minutes? 50 seconds? Hmm. Uh, normal chocolate cake. And is your pan really shallow and big? What type of a pan are you supposed to put it in? That is weird, but I, it could be, um, as for, it could be the nature of this recipe. 50 seconds at 250. A normal pan. And how, uh, how, how high is the batter? Is it 50 seconds at 250? Is it, two inches is there any uh baking powder in it that is very weird uh if it's on someone's blog the person could have had a typo so see if there's any comments under the the recipe that is 250 though 50 seconds both of those seem a little bit um, atypical 50 seconds I would think more um, 50 minutes or maybe between 30 minutes and 50 minutes and then the 250 sounds a bit low for Fahrenheit if that's converted to but then if that's converted to Fahrenheit if it that if that were Celsius that would be high that would be 450 500 Fahrenheit that's really hot hmm hmm five inches five inches not centimeters so that's like that high is it a is it a is it a chocolate molten lava cake because i know there are some molten lava cakes where um the lava part is actually uncooked batter but you have eggs in there so i would um yeah um five centimeters two inches is it a molten lava chocolate cake where the inside has to stay like runny? Hmm. Why don't you, uh, why don't you post your, the recipe link and see if the community, yeah, exactly. The raw eggs doesn't sound, why don't you post it? It's just a normal chocolate cake. Hi, AR Maestro. Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> we have our, our Dutch bread cake in the oven right now. It will bake for approximately 45 minutes. And we um, also have a salsa that we're working on. We'll probably have time for a hummus too. Hmm. Yeah, please feel free, Texturias, to post the link to that chocolate cake recipe. And uh, we'll see if the community can find, can sort of comment on that, that uh, baking time and baking temperature. Okay. <laughs> And as I was stalling, I was kind of silently hoping that Shiretone might have a, an idea for on what to do with this pineapple shell. But I just thought maybe I would, ooh, let me see if I can keep this flat. It could be like a pineapple bowl. Um, thought, I thought I would cut it in half, save the top half and cut the crown off and the crown could just be on the plate for presentation um, but i thought the bottom could just be a bowl for the for the salsa so it'll be a pineapple shell bowl um, i don't have to use all the fruit that i carve out but i can retain the shell as a bowl i could um, cut off the crown and use that for plating for decoration purposes although you know it's not a lot of these leaves are dry but i just thought it's kind of nice to to make use of the crown and the shell they're they're very nice <laughs> um oh your thumb is healed glad to know yeah that sounded really painful but i'm glad that you're back to normal <laughs> You can't find the recipe. Ah, uh, well, what? I mean, the basic rule when you're to check if something is done is to 
use a toothpick, insert it and see if it comes out clean or if any batter is stuck to it. So you can try that, that 50 seconds, 50 seconds for 250 and take it out and, and check, check it. But if you want to ask if it makes sense, hmm, 50. I, I just don't think it does if it's two inches and you've got raw eggs and um, it's that thick. That's my comment, but you can try that. You can um, try it and take it out and use a toothpick and uh, you might need to finish it off. 50 minutes. So, okay, not 50 seconds, 50 minutes. It might, it might because at a higher temperature of 300, you'd probably have closer to half an hour to 45 minutes. So that might be okay. Yeah, that might be okay. It doesn't sound too off now. Now that we know more information that it's five centimeters thick, it doesn't sound that bad, five centimeters. I have a ruler on this. Well, I'm gonna approximate two inches, so. So that's about, <laughs> I don't want to give you the finger, but that's about the thumb. Yeah, at two, at 50 minutes, 250. Give it a try. Yeah, but um, don't hold me accountable. <laughs> okay, so shower tones recommendation or suggestion. If you cut the, uh, both the bottom and top off, you should make the bottom a bowl with the top as sort of a lid. That way you get the presentation a bonus of taking off the pineapple top lid to present your dish. I actually don't need to cut the bottom. I think, I think I can do, so it's easy to show. I can do, I can cut the middle or, you know, like a third. So I have like a bowl down here. I can cut up here right um, retain some of the base so that we have a lid and then this um, middle piece that is left over can just keep it aside I think that works right alternatively <laughs> I'll sue your twitch channel <laughs> well um, <laughs> you can't if I have provided my disclaimer so <laughs> there you go <laughs> and we've got witnesses <laughs> But uh, <laughs> um, good luck and let us know how it turns out. 50 minutes sounds, it sounds better than 50 seconds for sure. <laughs> Alternatively, you could cut out one or two oh, windows in the middle. A pineapple house. Wow. I don't know if I could carve out a lot of uh, fruit with only windows. Hmm. <laughs> okay, keep thinking. That's all of you. And I'm gonna add the olive oil and salt. We've got our salt pig. Just a quarter teaspoon or less. I don't, I'm not really big on the salt. Some cracker. <laughs> Hi, Osti Patio Mentalis. Oh, hey there. <laughs> they all work. Hello. Hey, uh, hi there. Hey there. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Well, how are you doing? <laughs> Nice to see you again. Thank you for tuning in to Cook for Fun. Yeah, all of us are returning viewers. Great, we all know each other. Sup, Obi, I remember you. <laughs> and olive oil coming out of a sriracha bottle. I'm not too big on it. My husband really likes it. Um, I try to not use oil if the flavor's already there. And some chili oil. And this is homemade chili oil. If you visit my Twitter page, I made hummus 
last week and I added chili oil to it and I posted the recipe for the chili oil. The chili oil is infused with cardamom, star anise, clove, cinnamon bark, ginger, garlic. So it's quite flavorful. Yeah, it's quite flavorful and good. Okay. Hey, am I going to be able to squeeze uh, hummus into this show as a bonus? Okay, so I think we're gonna use this bottom portion. So I'm going to cut around here, this, the bottom portion, okay, as the bowl. And then I'm going to cut around here. I'm going to use this top portion as the lid. And this uh, middle portion is going to be saved for another day. <laughs> okay. So let's do our little bowl. I can always make the bowl bigger, actually. Actually, we do have quite a bit of salsa, so let's make the bowl bigger. I don't have to, I can carve as much fruit as we need, or I can use as much fruit as we need, so I'm gonna make the bowl bigger. Yeah, I'm gonna go right in the middle. Um, nice and soft, okay. Pilot persons. <laughs> what is a pilot person? Uh, anana, <laughs> pineapple, that's pineapple in French. The pineapple is for the salsa. Okay. And I'm. Make another. It's not gonna. Um, so it converges. The bottom. The center is fatter than the tag is in your way. I have to cut that off the top. So I do want some base left. So I have a lid. Um, so we are not gonna, the base of the lid is not gonna cover it completely, but that's okay because we're gonna top it with salsa and put it on top of the salsa. If it doesn't stay on, oh, I can use toothpicks to keep it on. It doesn't stay on I can just sort of angle it like it's just for the presentation so let's do that so I'm going to leave about one inch under the greenery and just do a straight cut through be careful to keep it straight okay it might not be perfectly straight but I'll try my best Okay, so, oh, it's not bad. It's, it actually looks like it's a, that's pretty cute. I want to take a picture of that for, to remember <laughs> before I open it up. I quite like the, and I need to find a scissors to, I can smell it. Uh, let me, turn on. Ah, it's baking. Okay, very good. Cut the tag off the pineapple. Okay. But I do like the way that looks. <laughs> the circular pineapple, it's different. Oh, you can't see, it's too close to you. There, <laughs> circular pineapple. <laughs> Just interesting. Okay, great. Okay, I'm reading Charton's message. Oh, Ananas is German, is it? Oh, okay. Banan, okay. Ananas, I thought it, okay. And, and Italian, ah, interesting. Okay, so Charton's message. I thought up an easier method for the second idea. It's not fully the same, but it retains the essence from the top, just next to the leaves, cut downwards until about two thirds from the top. Do this on two, on two parallel sides. The remaining shell from the middle should keep 
up the top of the roof while giving enough space to cut out the fruit and use the bottom as a bowl. Hmm, I might have, <laughs> so I might have prevented us from doing that. I already cut it, but I'm, I'm intrigued. I'll remember that pineapples are on sale. They're a dollar at the supermarket, so I might go and buy one just to try that out. <laughs> but I'm thinking this next leaf is cut downward. The remaining shelf in the middle should keep up the top. Then cut out the fruit and use the bottom as a bowl. I'll, I need to visualize it a bit more because I imagine, I imagine cutting straight down. Um, but then I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> Aww. Okay. Um, but I am interested. So we'll chat more about how to do this and, um, yeah, <laughs> we'll get a pineapple on the show. We'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. Welcome back, Elmaria. Okay. The brother needs about another 20 minutes. So we're going to, oh, it looks nice. We're going to carve out some pineapple. Mm-hmm. I know um, Shiretone's method is to go at an angle so that uh, I could get, I could pluck the, f the fruit out. I remember <laughs> from our pineapple boat episode. And I... <laughs> the middles. Some people don't eat them, but when the fruit is really ripe, they're actually edible. Yeah. They tend to be harder or contain more fiber than the, main, the other fruity parts of the pineapple. But this pineapple is quite ripe that we could eat the middle. <laughs> what did you miss? Almira, um, the cutting of the pineapple. <laughs> and I added salt and olive oil and pepper and chili oil to the, the salsa. Okay, can you see? There's not much going on. <laughs> I w don't think I'll use all this pineapple for the salsa, but I'll cut it out just to get the bowl so that we can put the salsa in it. Really quite nice. We actually might have just enough time. Uh, we might just finish the salsa in time for the brother. So we might not do the hummus. We can save that for another day. But that was going to be, you know, the backup plan. I'll just I do angle cuts just to sort of force some of the extra pineapple out. Mm hmm. Hi there, Sneaglery. Sneaglero, how are you? Welcome to Cook for Fun TV. And let us know what country you're tuning in from. Yeah. We have viewers from US, Singapore, Netherlands, Belgium, and Canada. I'm from Canada. Did I get it every did I get everyone? Yeah. Okay. I might not fuss too much about getting the bottom has a lot of like bits. I might not fuss too much about getting that out. Because it's all gonna be covered with salsa. And we're gonna cut the cut the bowl later to eat the fruit anyway. But I'll get as much as I can out. Yeah, it's a little hard. I think it's tough because it's near the end. So I think that's why it's tough. Okay. Okay, I didn't do a very... I got a bowl, so we'll leave it at that and 
chop up this pineapple. And I'll save some aside too for Winston, our dog. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Salaman alikam abla. What is that? Merhaba dostum. Okay. Let's see. After you cut straight down, exactly like you visualize, you stop. Um, oh, and I want to know, am I, I'm puncturing it or am I doing a clean cut, like getting rid of the walls? Yeah. So that's, that's my first question. You stop at two thirds from the top, then make horizontal cuts to take off. Okay. So it is a clean cut. Okay. Finishing your cut. What you basically have then is an, a, would be an intact one third bottom as a ball, a middle that sh that has a fruit showing on two sides with the other. So you're making like a gazebo, like a yeah, like a like a rooftop on top of the bowl with the with the parts that are intact, sort of as the foundation or the beam for the for the the beam for the um, rooftop. That's what it sounds like, an intact top, okay? This way, you can cut out the middle fruit and some of the bottom fruit, leaving you with an intact bottom, two middle sides, two middle sides with intact shell to be, two middle sides, two middle sides. Okay, so the center will be hollow, okay. Hello, my friend. Oh, thank you. And what language is that in? And what country are you tuning in from? Sneaglero? The other message doesn't try it. Okay. Hmm. I wish I had read your message earlier. Oh, next time. <laughs> that would have been so much fun to get the, to get the vertical height. <laughs> Cause it's never been done before on Twitch or at least I believe it hasn't been. <laughs> Okay. Hmm. <laughs> so we're going the simple route with just a ball. <laughs> a basic ball. <laughs> I mean, I've got chopsticks. I can hold up the, the top. <laughs> I think I'll do that to make up for not having, the, to make up for a cut top, rooftop. Okay. So I just roughly chopped up Pineapple. I'm going to add about half of that into into the salsa. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to save the rest. Winston will enjoy some of this. Not all of it. It's too much sugar, but he'll enjoy some of it. Okay. So, ten minutes until the brother comes out. Oh, pineapple pizza, that's right. Hi, Wicked Fairy, how are you? Ah, oh, okay. Well, thank you for tuning in, Sligo. Yeah, are you tuning in from Turkey? Pineapples are the perfect fruit to be created with. That's right, pineapple pizza, hello. <laughs> Again, Wicked Fairy. You can now use the top as a lid. Nothing beats the surprise of a lid being lifted and seeing that gorgeous food will be on your plate. <laughs> okay, check on the brother, okay. It looks pretty good. I am. I can't tell if the middle is cooked. <laughs> I really can't tell. It's actually brown. I am going to uh, turn on the fan and lower the heat. I'm going to lower the heat because um, it's already brown. I just want to make sure that the inside is so I'm going to turn it, I'm actually going to turn it off. 
I'm going to turn it off. And I'm going to turn the fan on. I don't want the fire alarm going on anymore. <laughs> okay, so. Ah, so it's Arabic as well. Salam alaikum. I know in, I think in Indonesian language and also Filipino, um, Salamat Datang is also a greeting. Yeah. Okay. Let's give that a taste. So there's pineapple in it. Mmm. Mmm. Um, the color is not dark brown, Almaria. It's it's a good brown. It's definitely golden brown. It's not light either. I think it's golden. So I'm going to leave it in the um, oven. I'm going to have it baking on a little bit to lower temperature, maybe 300. Hmm. No, it's very, very hot. Yeah. Half an hour at 425 is really, really hot. So I think we're good. Okay, but I'll let it just sit there for another 15 minutes. Yeah, I think it's good though. Okay, oh, I might change my mind. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's start plating. Hmm. We're going to get chopsticks to hold up the top of the gazebo. <laughs> okay, and before we do that, I'm going to take out our cake plate. We always plate using our cake plate. So one second. Uh. Okay. <laughs> do I do any type kind of meditation I don't I, I do this sport called slacklining which resembles tightrope walking it's except that the line is not tight it's it's got a bit of slack to it it's a little bit tight, but not very tight. It's got a bit of slack to it. And sometimes that sport is referred to as moving meditation because you have to be very focused when you um, are on this, um, when you're balancing on the slack line. So I do that, <laughs> but I don't do any regular meditation. I should though, I think it's very good for the mind. Yeah, I think I should though. I, I do yoga here and there when I'm watching TV, but I don't really dedicate a time slot to just focus, um, which I should. Yeah, but it's some people do it every day. It's good for you. It's very, very good for you. Hmm. Oh, hello, White Lack. How are you? <laughs> Welcome to Cook for Fun TV and let us know what country you're tuning in from. The flags to the sides represent countries that viewers have tuned in from since our show started. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get a couple of chopsticks. I have 
an assortment. I've got these really, really long ones. I think they're too big, so we'll put those away. <laughs> got these ones. Oh, you're from Turkey. Wonderful. And uh, what are some foods that you that are considered national dishes uh, to Turkey? Okay, and there's these. There's these uh, dark ones. So what colors are we gonna do? I think I want to use the neutral colored ones. Um, I don't want the pull to detract from the dish. Okay. A good thing I didn't carve too much fruit out, but um, okay. I think we'll have to do a V shape. Yeah, a V shape. Okay. I'll have to poke a hole in the fruit because the one end isn't sharp. Yeah, it's a good thing I didn't um, cut all the fruit out because now I have to put these in to create the base. There. Ah, it's a crisscross. Okay, that's pretty stable. Okay, and I also want to get a green dish for um, the presentation. Vichnat Han, is that a type of meditation? Hmm, wow. Okay. Barak, okay, I'll look into that. Barak. Ah, okay, I'm up for a challenge, but I will check out the recipe and see if the ingredients are accessible um, where I am. I am located in Canada. I am in a suburb just outside Toronto. I can see Toronto outside my house, but I'm slightly north of it in a city called Markham. Okay, so we're filling it up with salsa. I mean, I, I'm going to assume that it can fit in the... Okay. That's a bit high. <laughs> That's a bit high. I sort of would prefer it to be lower. <laughs> we'll see how we do. We see it. We'll see how we go. <laughs> oh, dropping salsa. You can't see the salsa. You see the pineapple. Like the salsa barely shows. Um, it shows, but like, um, you see pineapple more than salsa. Violet. Okay. Yeah. I kind of feel like. <laughs> okay, it's gonna have to straight in. It's gonna fall, I think. No? Ah, it's a little bit spit on the high side. Ah, I'm not very good at balancing this. Might have to use either some takeout chopsticks that are shorter or smaller. Okay, so I've got a, ch a ch takeout chopstick. I think the. I'm gonna just break this, okay? <laughs> Unless I have another. Use toothpicks all around, but um, okay. I'm gonna break this chopstick. 
Hi, Nunez Benjamin, how are you? <laughs> Welcome back to our show, hope you've been well. Yeah, it's, I don't know if I'm gonna get a clean break though. Okay. It's pretty nice. Okay, so we can have it. We have a little gap. Oh. I need to puncture some holes uh, on the lid. Okay, it's a little bit crooked to show to sort of show that it's a lid opening up. Okay, see you later, Charitone. Thank you for dropping by and have yourself a wonderful week. Take care. Okay. There. So it's like it's like it's opened up, and I'm going to just fill it with. More salsa, fill that space with more salsa. <laughs> Thank you, Elmaria. Yeah. Don't worry, we'll check on the brother soon. We'll take it out. The star of this menu is the brother, not the salsa. The salsa was made to Uh, fill in the time while we're waiting for it to bake. So yeah, the star is still your request dish Okay, I hope it doesn't fall. I think I think it's like good, but like I feel like it could fall any minute I'm gonna take a picture before we have some accident photo of that. Don't fall, don't fall. Okay, you're gonna see the back of it, but it's gonna show up in my photo, then I'll turn it back around. When you see the photo I'll post it on Twitter later, you're gonna see that the the crown, the leaves are not very um, fresh. Like, it's a very ripe fruit. All right. Okay, we're gonna take the brother out. Okay. So I'll let you see that again. Yeah. Sideways, straight on. Sideways sort of shows. <laughs> that it's opening it up, opening up to you. Okay, time for the brother. I have a couple of cooling racks. I think we need a bigger one. Turn the fan on. Try to prevent the smoke alarm from. So, 
our sun. We, ha we have a sunburn. <laughs> the broider is okay, but the sun, the apricot and the, the lemon, <laughs> it burned. I should have taken a picture of it before putting it in the oven. <laughs> so the apricot and the lemon zest burned. But the bread is baked. Okay, so we're gonna have to cut it open. Let's see if I turn around if it's burnt. Ah, the other side is orange. Or yeah, let's all turn it around. <gasps> the lemon says <laughs> there. So now the the apricot is orange now. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, let me get to this side maybe. Okay. Hmm, let me get another case stand. my cutting board to cut this so I'm gonna slip this underneath <laughs> and then I'm gonna take it off so okay let me take a photo again <laughs> before I cut into it I don't know what the inside looks like. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, we're going to cut it. Yes. Guess I should cut it down here. So, let me see if I can cut towards you. My first, it's like a birthday cake. <laughs> I feel like. Okay. <laughs> I can smell it. I can smell the fruits. And I can smell. I think I smell the spices. Okay. Is it supposed to be crusty like this? Just wondering. It's very crusty, but it could be my dough. Okay. Maybe I should cut it in half or should I cut it in like, like slices, like a pizza or a cake? <laughs> Hmm. Okay, I'll cut a triangle, I guess. Little triangle. It's crusty. It's it's a bread cake. <laughs> oh, like a pizza. Okay. Ah, you're fasting. Oh. <laughs> when does your fast end? But it's very spiritual. It's very spiritual to fast. Yeah. And when you're finished your fasting, you can go back to 
um, eating some of the things that you missed. Oh, Ramadan? Ah. Brave, yeah, should be watching while you're fasting. <laughs> Hi, potato ducky. <laughs> Welcome to Cook for Fun TV. You're just in time for our, our sampling. And let us know what country you're tuning in from. The flags on our sides represent the countries our viewers have tuned in from since our show started in December. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, you know what I'll do? I'm gonna put it back on the plate and show you as I take the slice off. So hopefully it will come off clean. We don't want any accidents. But, uh, come off clean. Da -da. Here you go, take the first bite. You can see the brown sugar, almond, specu, spec, um, specu, last gruden, spice, lemon zest filling. The crust has apricot, raisin in it. Mm -hmm. It is a bread cake. It, uh, yeah, the, the dough had yeast in it and flour, mil milk, and egg. So it's not a fluffy cake. Mm hmm So, all right. So you can let you see this inside of it. That, let you see the salsa. Maybe I'll put this back a bit because I think the star of the stream is the bread cake. The salsa was a filler. To do something while it's the bread cake is baking. Is this how it's supposed to look like, Almaria? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It does feel like bread. Okay. <laughs> I know. I'm keeping you in suspense, white lack. All right. Should I go for the crust first or the filling? I like to do a little bit of both, like alternate, because I feel like if I eat all the if I eat all the filling. Um, the, the crust, like, yeah, <laughs> I don't want to, I want to, uh, preserve some of like the filling as well. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Close up to, okay. I'm going to go for it. I feel like I'm going to take the crust first because I want to know what the bread tastes like with nothing on it. Just the bread with the raisin and the apricot. Then I'll have it with the filling. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> So the bread, it tastes like a raisin bread, and that's what it is. It's a bread with raisin and apricot. I actually didn't get any apricot in that last bite, so I'll do another bite. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. It's nice with the fruit. So you can just um, make bread on its own with raisins and apricots, and it. it's a nice touch. I'm sorry, you can see the mess here. I always try to hide it, but I moved the camera so you can see my mess. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna go for the filling. It is good though, because I think some of the filling seeped in. Um, so I can, and I can smell it as I'm eating the bread. I can smell the filling. So it's affecting my, I guess, eating experience. <laughs> All the aromas are there. Mmm. 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 So, I taste the almond, 
but the almond is like finely grounded. It's mixed well with the brown sugar and the, and the specula scruton spice. So it's not very strong. It's not like a very heavy almond butter taste or um, like a, a very, a very nutty taste. It's, it's there, it's definitely there, but it's, it was grounded to a fine powder. It's mixed and blended so well with the brown sugar. The brown sugar is gentle. It's not as strong as white sugar and I can taste the aromas or I can smell the aroma and taste the, uh, the specula scruton seasoning or spices, which have nine different ingredients. It's really, really lovely. I recommend this. Um, I thought the filling would be like syrupy, but it's not, it's actually dry. Yeah, I thought that once the sugar melts, it would turn into um, like be very syrup, but it's not. It's, it's uh, pasty. It's, yeah, it's very good. <laughs> I was a little bit nervous because it's gonna be, you know, it's a big portion, but we'll we'll eat it all, <laughs> and I'll share some with my family. <laughs> There's someone else in the kitchen. That was my dog. Yeah, he he walked in. He'll say he'll say hi to you. He'll say hi to you before we eat, we finish the stream. It's really good. I'm gonna take another bite. <laughs> Mm. And I can taste the lemon zest too. There's a lot going on in the filling. The almond, the brown sugar, the lemon zest, and the, um, the specula screwed in seed spices. Really, really good. So if you're just newly joined in, the specula scruton spices have the nine ingredients. I think I can almost name them all. Yeah, I can name them all. Cinnamon, cardamom, ginger, nutmeg, coriander, I'm cheating, I'm looking over, clove, anise powder, mace, there's one more. <laughs> White pepper. It's very, very nice. And combined with the lemon zest to give it that citrus kick. And the almond gives it that deep, nutty flavor. Um, and the brown sugar. It's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, you mean there's two people. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, you weren't talking about the sound. You're talking about how you can see me. <laughs> it's look at <laughs> the food. <laughs> there. <laughs> Speculus is so Dutch. Oh, that's the, I guess, the short form of saying the spice. Specula scruton. Hmm. Thank you, Sharatone. Oh, you came back <laughs> from your shopping. And now you know why I make it only a few times a year. It costs so much time to make. Ah, uh, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> but I was streaming and I was having fun while doing it. So, so it didn't feel like it took a lot of effort and it was my first time, so I had a lot of patience and I was dialoguing with you to, to see if I was getting the steps right. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You're right. The small cam is delayed. That is funny. <laughs> oh, oh, it's so, this spice is also used in uh, Germany too. Speculas uh, speculatious. Ah, wow. There's a lot of um, um, European um, treats and culinary delights that are not 
widely known in North America and it's just a whole new world to explore not just uh, in Europe but other parts of the world too so it's just so much fun I encourage you to keep your ideas coming because uh, we learn a lot and it's just so much fun yeah yeah it's really really good though <laughs> I, I want to share with you because it's so good <laughs> yeah um, so if some of you are noticing the salsa and you want me to try it I tested along the way but I'll get I can get some pita and and test it too ah okay okay so in Germany you eat it on Christmas and around and in um, in like and uh, like the Dutch speaking regions uh, eat it all year round in Belgium okay yep. hmm mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. The lemon zest is really, really nice. So, for sure. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay. Put this aside, and I'm going to do. I'm going to sample the salsa on a chip. <laughs> on a chip. One second. Where is Winston? Where is Winston? Winston, where are you? I don't know where Winston is. <laughs> he was outside. Then he came in, but I don't know where he ran off to. He could be um, watching Daddy put uh, build the shed. Okay, so I'm just using pita chips, but you can use any chips, or you can um, add salsa to your other dishes. Salsa with um, ha on hamburgers tastes really good. I'm not gonna get it from the pineapple. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get it from my bowl. Salsa is good with hamburger, with chicken, I think even with salmon. It's just a nice, nice refreshing dressing. It's like a, it's almost like bruschetta. Bruschetta with a bit of chili pepper and lime. Yeah, and pineapple. Mm -hmm. It's refreshing. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> mm. So if you just joined in, or you didn't see us um, preparing the salsa, the basic ingredients are onion, tomato, cilantro, lime. Then we added salt and pepper and chili pepper to taste and oil for texture and some pineapple and it's really really fruity and flavorful you can add it to so many things Thanks. wait what else and before we go <laughs> my follower alert wasn't showing up for some reason but I can see in my email the people that have followed, so I want to thank you for following and welcome you to the show. So, um, thank you, Borkner, for your follow, the Muppet Surgery Special, White Lack, Nano Coaster, and Fire Ryan. Thank you so much for your follow, and thank you to our regular followers for tuning in today and offering your guidance on the show and uh, making it fun as usual. Thank you to the moderators for keeping this channel a uh, safe and welcoming community for everyone. And please keep your viewers request coming. I enjoy learning from you and I look forward to seeing you again next week. We stream every Sunday at uh, 
9 a.m. East Standard, uh, Eastern Standard Time, which is the same time zone as New York. Oh, I have a follow on Twitter. Thank you for that. <laughs> and we, we, yeah, we really enjoy taking on viewers' requests. So keep in touch. Look at our channel to see what we're making next and follow us on Twitter. If you hit exclamation mark social or social media, you'll get our links to Twitter and Facebook. And <laughs> yeah, next week is so long. I know I used to stream on Saturday and Sunday, but after moving to the new home and uh, we have a lot of home improvements to do. So we're always, we're always working on the house. But thank you so much and keep your viewers requests coming i look forward to cooking another uh, food item for you yeah and i wish winston were around let me find him let me find him i'll be back winston where are you winston in he's really really fast he's outside <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's outside but I don't know if I'll be able to catch him <laughs> okay oh he, Winston's here okay he'll come over I'll give him some pineapple pineapple Oh, he's already in his defensive mode because he knows I want to pick him up. <laughs> okay, you can see him on camera. He's over there. <laughs> okay. See, he's running because he knows I want to pick him up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you saw Winston. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, uh, Boston Terriers are runners. <laughs> um, chicken hearts will make him come, but he's in defense mode right now. He's gonna chicken hearts, chicken hearts. Yeah, you can hear that, the chicken gizzard, huh? <laughs> He's running. Ah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's eating his chicken heart. You want more, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not moving. Okay. 
We'll both say bye to you. <laughs> All right. Okay. You like this? This is pineapple. You want another chicken heart? Okay. Or chicken liver? Yeah. <laughs>